little bird off to the left hand side. I'll go ahead and tweet this out. And uh, so, G, why don't you give us a little bit of uh, background about yourself? Yeah, definitely. My name is George B. Thomas. Uh, usually I'm just George Thomas, but that's a very interesting point is that online I am George B to actually kind of separate myself from all of the other George Thomases that might be out there. It's kind of a persona or a shtick. I work for the salesline.com. That hasn't always been true, um, but because of what we're going to talk about today, that is a reality. And um, my life is crazy awesome. I travel around, I speak. I go to companies and I do workshops. Um, I sit in my little office and dream about really cool things that we can do and accomplish all day. And it really is because of this personal brand journey that we're going to talk about today, Don. Yeah, and I think that's one of the reasons that I'm so passionate about this. And I'm actually going to see if Chris wants to join us too, because uh, he's somebody who inspires me a lot on this, is that when we find meaning in the work we do, we do our best work. And that doesn't mean just work in our business. It means in our life. It impacts our home life. It impacts our mental health, our physical health, all that all that kind of stuff um, to, to really give us a sense of, of value, of happiness, etc. So for me, this scales way beyond just, hey, I want to be able to position myself as a great speaker or I want to get a job that, um, you know, is, is something that I've been shooting for. I really think this is something that you need to think about because it transcends so many different areas. Well, and I'll tell you, you know, you use the word work, which I think is honestly a dirty word. Mm -hmm. um, I'm a big proponent of that. I really don't work at all. Um, I play all day yeah. long. You know, I might get to play on this website or I might get to play analyzing these analytics or I might get to play doing a blab. Um, but none of it to me, none of it feels like it's work. And that's that's I think why I can be so um, involved for such long time time uh, periods and mm -hmm. it doesn't feel like I'm getting burnt out or that I need a vacation or I need a break from what I'm doing because I'm just playing, man. Absolutely. And one of the things that I think is important to think about, and this is true for everybody, um, I years ago, I, I used to do career coaching. And one of the things that was true at the time was that the average work span we have, you know, for most people, you start when you're 16 years old and go to 70 years old. But the average amount of time in a, in a job for somebody in their 20s is 13 months. And in your 30s and 40s, it's like 36 months. And the, so the reality is we're always moving on and changing jobs, looking for new work. And one of the things I see a lot of people do is they feel like they're passive in the in the process of trying to become what they want to be and do the kind of work that they want to do. And I think your story is really compelling because it shows how when you start using digital media, your website, your social media channels to start reaching out in a real strategic way, once you get to know who you are and what you want to do, you can you can really create opportunity. You don't have to be fresh out of college. You don't have to have a super special college degree or GPA or anything like that. It's really about leveraging what's there. So why don't you share some of your backstory about what you were doing and how you got to the point today of being this inbound hero, working with the man, the myth, the legend, <laughs> Marcus Sheridan, yeah. and becoming one of the men, the myths, and the legends uh, the, himself. So, uh, well, First of all, I, I humbly accept that, but I'm still on my own journey. I don't feel like I have become all that I am supposed to be, but I'm definitely working hard to get there. You know, it's funny, before I dive too deep into this, Don, I want to say that you mentioned a second dirty word. Um, already, we're like three minutes, four that's, minutes into the I roll. <laughs> and, and you mentioned retirement, right? And the fact that there's an end game to quit all of this. And um, I laugh because my wife and I, we have the end game that I'd love to build my brand to the point where Retirement looks a little bit like something in a big RV traveling around to go speak to different places until I just can't drive an RV anymore. Like I don't even plan on ever retiring again because I'm not working. I'm playing. But here's the deal. Everything that we're about to dive into, Don, I think we have to realize that it's predicated on one pivotal point, And that's do you want to be something or somebody mm -hmm. you see? 
ever since I was a kid, I always felt like I was destined for more, destined to do something bigger than where I was at in life. And there's not all people feel like that. Some people, they get into their job. That's where they're comfortable. They like the nine to five. They like the wife. They like the two point, you know, the two kids and the white picket fence. And that's just their three kids, 2.3 kids. Yeah. Yeah. Which I never understood <laughs> that stat. Like I, who wants the point three? But anyway, we, we, we digress. So some people are comfortable in that. And I always just felt like there was more, but I didn't really know what that more was. And so my my first thing, though, is if you're comfortable, be comfortable. But if you are one of these, you know, personality types where you're like, gosh, I, I always feel like I was destined for something else, then you need to um, go down that road and you need to address that. So a little bit about where I was. Um, it was 2012. And I was working for an agency that did web development. We did traditional design, um, your typical things. And we actually had a social media manager that we did some social stuff on the side. Very little. It was not like our cup of tea. You know, it wasn't what we were great at. But he came to us one day, the owner and myself, and he said, hey, there's this world's biggest webinar going on. Um, and this company named HubSpot is, is uh, doing it. And we're like, HubSpot? That's a stupid name, but okay, <laughs> Like, let's go ahead and jump on this webinar. And so they were doing this thing that if you tweeted out so many times, you know, the, the person who tweeted the most during the webinar, that five people out of the top 10 tweeters would win tickets. And our social media dude, his fingers were on fire, like he was blazing. <laughs> and the bad thing is that he didn't win the tickets, but the owner and myself did. And so <laughs> we were... We went to Inbound 2012, and Don, I, I'll remember this day till the day I die. I was sitting in the keynote. The keynote was Gary Vaynerchuk. I was listening to him do his shtick for the first time ever. He was talking about Crush. He was talking about Thank You Economy. I had heard all this stuff about inbound marketing and the methodology and that you could be a real human and you didn't have to feel slimy to be a marketer. And I sat there and I had what I will call a God moment where I realized, oh my gosh, like everything I've done in my life, and I'm getting goosebumps, bro, just thinking about it right now. <laughs> everything in my life that I've done to this point has gotten me to that I'm supposed to be here listening to this and I'm supposed to move on. And I made a really bold, bold statement to myself and to the owner of the company that I was working for at that point. And I said, one of these days, I'm going to be there. I'm going to speak on that stage. I'm going to speak it inbound. And um, when I said that, I didn't realize that in three years, they would go from 2,500 attendees to 14,000. Uh, atten <laughs> so, <clears throat> so now my goal is really quite a large goal. But I still, that's where it started out. That's what I wanted to drive to. And so to bring that to a point, what I needed to realize and what people who go on this inbound zero to inbound hero journey. And that's what we're talking about today. The first thing you need to understand is where are you at, right? Where are you at right now? You have to be very self-aware. You have to understand the goods, the bads, the uglies of where you're at in the position. And from that, you need to realize, okay, where do I need to get? What tools do I need to um, gather around? You know, our, our buddy, Chris Brogan, uh, is on the on the blab here for him it would be his batman's tool belt yeah, right what yeah. do i need to have and so for me or i realized spartan I, race tool belt spartan race exactly <laughs> so for me i realized i've got to have strategy i've got to have tactics i've got to understand the methodology or the religion that is this inbound thing and the biggest thing i knew right then and there being a zero man i've got to build relationships with key people so Understand where you're at and understand the tools that you're going to need moving forward. <laughs> and thank you for the props. For those of you who are watching, make sure to tweet out the uh, this blab to people because part of part of the goal of using this platform is J George and I are really into you know we want to change people's lives with this. Um, I I teach a personal branding class at the University of Wisconsin as well as do this type of work with my clients. And, and you see a lot of times people's lives when they get a sense that they have control of this. You get, a, you get a switch that's flipped and you get 
much more positive. You get much more, a lot of the anxiety, depression, I mean, not to go too deep on that route, but I see that a lot in people that once they start to feel like what that moment you just had, where you talked about that Gary Vaynerchuk moment that, Hey, this is possible. I can be and share the gifts that I have by building my brand online. I mean, that, that really changes people's lives. And again, I've seen it with lots of different students, lots of different clients. So can you talk a little bit about, um, what it was that you started doing from a digital media standpoint to start making connections, to go from being this guy who just gets lucky enough to win a ticket because you let somebody, a minion do your work yeah. uh, <laughs> to, to getting recruited essentially by Marcus Sheridan of the sales line. Um, to give us a little bit of background on that if you could. Yeah. 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 So the first thing Don I did is um, I said, who is already where I want to be? OK, mm -hmm. and so I look for people like Mark Schaefer, Chris Brogan, Marcus Sheridan, uh, Jay Bear, um, all the guys that were like where I wanted to be. And I started paying very close attention to what they were doing. You know, how were they speaking? Were they were they putting on podcasts? Were they blogging all the time? Were, you know, how were they changing people's lives? And I quickly was able to find some that I wanted to filter out because I didn't believe that they were going to help build the message that I felt I needed to eventually bring to the world. And so I had this core group of guys that I would really pay attention to. And what I want people to realize is they were my mentors, even though they didn't have any clue who I was. They didn't know I existed, right? But they were my mentors and I paid attention to what they were teaching. The other thing that I did is that I became a sponge, Don. And what I mean by be becoming a sponge is when I gathered those folks around, I absorbed everything I could absorb. I would pay attention to these thought leaders. I would listen to their podcasts. And, and I'm going to get real here for a second. When this is really important to you, it's podcasts versus Netflix. Okay. Mm -hmm. It's, it's podcast versus dancing with the stars because with podcasting, you're actually bringing education that you're going to be able to leverage and use for other people in, in the future. Here's the other thing. When you're really into this, Don, your top apps become things like Audible, Pocket, and Pocket yeah. Cast or iTunes instead yeah. of Candy Crush, uh, Angry Birds, and freaking Words with Friends, right? <laughs> because you're focused on absorbing so much yeah. because you know that right, right here, you want to give value back out. And if you're an inbound zero, if you're a content marketing zero, you ain't got nothing to give. You can't give no love. Yep. And so you got to get it inside you. You got to work it around in your own brain. You got to come up with your own thoughts and processes so that you can redeposit it into the world around a community that is going to engage and understand you. Okay. Amen. And amen. And, and now, just to riff on that, <laughs> just for a quick second, I think that's sure. so incredibly important because I know people who are, who are the big names, everybody wants a piece of their mind. And all the people that I know, I mean, Chris is a great example because he's here are so generous, but there's a limit to, you know, they have families, they have lives. And, and if you want to pick their brain, go listen to their podcast, go read their books, go read their materials because they're sharing so much quality there that, you know, it, it's invaluable. And, you know, it reminds me of something that Dave Ramsey told me once, which is, you know, if you want to see somebody's level of success, go look at the size of their television set versus the size of their library. And uh, we can translate it to, to digital. And it's okay to watch TV. It's okay to relax. But if all you're doing, like you said, is playing those games and doing things to, you know, essentially check out, which we all need to a degree. But if you're not filling yourself with great stuff from people who are leading the way, letting them mentor you uh, digitally, I mean, it's it, that's extremely powerful. So I love that. Yeah. And don't get me wrong. I don't want to sound all Mother Teresa about this. Trust me, I have <laughs> been, a Mother Teresa. <laughs> listen, I have been I have binge watched heroes and lost many a time. But um, then I realized, hey, I got to stop and I got to get back on this road that I'm journeying down. Now, I want to talk about because we were talking about what got me to where I am now. And I want to I want to say what I think is the most. Well, there's a lot of valuable points. So this is maybe a, a medium to most valuable point is that, um, dude, I was really good at being human. Mm -hmm. Really good at being human. So um, I'll tell this story. I was listening to a podcast. Marcus Sheridan uh, was doing, I think it was episode 16 of Mad Marketing. Yeah. Um, he said something about taking his kids to church the next morning. And I was like, oh, dude, I love this guy. Like, I'm, I'm in, I'll listen to every podcast 
from here on out that he ever does. And so I sent him an email and I said, dude, I don't want anything. I just want to let you know, I think it's super cool that you dropped the fact you're taking your kids to church the next morning. Um, that means a lot to me. Um, that's it. Right. And I didn't realize how valuable that email was at that point. But now looking back and all the people that email us and they it all it's always an ask. Yes. It's always yes, an ask. Yes. And so that email actually from hindsight was priceless. But so that started this really weird thing of like six months after that. Um, he used Wild Boy, which was the company yeah, I was working I, for. I that totally point. remember that. Yeah. So he um he used an about us page as an example on his website. I about passed out. I'm like, oh, my God, we're on the sales line, you know, and so that was super cool moment. And then inbound 2013, I went back. I made sure I saw him speak in person. Uh, I went up to the front of the stage where he when he was done speaking, I went to shake his hand. He pulled it in for the hug. I was like, oh, man, this dude is super awesome. <laughs> so we talked for a little bit. And from that point, he in his mind, like. Uh, there's something to this guy, meaning me, right? And, and I'm not saying he thought that I was, you know, better than Lucky Charms or anything, but he just had this feel that there was something there. And so eight months after that, I got this mysterious phone call. Hey, this is Marcus Sheridan. I'm like, ah, who's punking me? Like, who is this really? <laughs> and uh, he's like, no, this is Marcus Sheridan. So we had a, a conversation. And, and so then, bam, I got hired for the sales line. I've been doing it for almost two years now. Wow. And, and again, it's one of those things where I don't ever think about what's next as far as a place of employment, because, um, man, this is home, baby. So so that's kind of what got me um, got me here. But I'll tell you, from once I got to the point I'm at now, there are some definite things that I focus on. But maybe we'll get into that as we go. Yeah. So it sounds like, you know, one of the things that is important to emphasize is it's, it's this combination of online and offline. So it isn't just, you know reaching out to people online. And I think you hit on a huge key point is that people like, again, I'll, I'll point out Chris and not to, not to, uh, hopefully not to embarrass you, but Chris has made a huge difference in my life for so many reasons, talking about mental health issues, talking about Spartan race, talking about so many things. And I will share his stuff anytime because he's about changing people's lives. And I, and I hope that he sees that a lot because I hope he understands how that, that he should feel good about that. Same thing with Marcus. I've, I've connected with Marcus on a personal level that way too. And to just say and reach out to people and say, thank you, you're you're helping out. I really appreciate what you're doing. You know, don't take for granted how much that means to somebody. And you can do that through a tweet. You can do that through uh, sharing content on a Facebook page or a LinkedIn account. You know, if you really believe in what somebody is doing, that's one way to genuinely get on their radar and also genuinely give them props for saying, Hey, you know, you're making a difference. We really, really appreciate it. And that and that's meaningful to me. Hey, listen, I'll agree, um, Don. It is about offline. I'll give you a little uh, inbound 2015 uh, behind the scenes that nobody knew that what was going on is uh, it was like the last day of inbound. Um, Chris Brogan had spoke. Uh, I, I didn't get a chance to go see him because he you know, in the infinite wisdom of inbound, they put Marcus Sheridan and Chris Brogan at the same oh, time. So no. I was like, super <laughs> but, um, but so I'm down in club inbound and I'm actually talking to another person. And all of a sudden I get this text, bing, and I look down and it's Tiffany Cavane, who is part of our team. And she's like, I am sitting with Chris Brogan right now. <laughs> and so I'm literally like looking at the guy and he's in mid sentence and I'm listening to him and I'm like, mm hmm. Mm -hmm. Hey, bro, I'm going to circle back around. I'll be right back. And like, I'll... that's me, <laughs> right? Fast I'm, like, <laughs> I'm trying to get upstairs so that I can sit on this white couch and just get the opportunity to ask Chris Brogan, hey, bro, when you were grinding it out, like what were the top things that you did to get to the next level of being a speaker? Because I knew that he had valuable things to tell me and in true fashion, he riffed off like five, six things. And I was like, this is super priceless. Anyway, Don, here's what I want to talk about, because you talked about offline and online as well. One of the things, and you guys should probably tweak this out. I don't know if we can change the title or just yeah. people need to people need to pay attention to this. When you get to a certain level, when you start to feel that kind of flow of your personal brand coming up, don't swim to the top by yourself. And so my point is you need to be a lifter. OK, mm -hmm. and, and this is where I'm going with this is that last RGE, which is remarkable growth experience. I got the opportunity to meet you, Don Stanley, 
in real person. We got to eat breakfast. We got to eat lunch. We got to sit in a room for two days and learn from Ian Altman, Joey Coleman, and Marcus Sheridan how to just rock your business on sales, marketing, and customer service. And I was like, I like this dude. Don is a cool dude, right? I had that same vibe that Marcus might have had for me, I had for you. And, and as well as there's people that have helped you get to the point where you're at in your life. So I want to give a shout out to my homeboy, Eric Jacobs, who was yeah. actually who mentored me and taught me a lot about design principles and typography and white space and all that stuff that I use every single day. And so when the brand started to build up, I was like, you know what? I, I want to take these cats with me. I want to be a lifter. And so that's why we started the Inbound Life podcast yep. where the three of us hop on and we talk about social media. We talk about inbound marketing. We talk about design and we bring the three disciplines together. But we all three rise together. Right. So don't take that ride to. And I use big, huge air quotes here. Stardom because it isn't stardom. It's just another level. Um, don't ride it by yourself. Bring people with you. And I think that's really true is that, you know, when, when you share the experience with different people and you find that alignment, that's one of the other things that I, I, I really push people to do in my classes and in my workshops is find people who are peers. I mean, we, like you had mentioned, we really connected. You had actually reached out to me. We met through Marcus's community and you reached out to me and I, I, I don't remember the exact feed, but it was something really short. And I'm like, hey, that's the dude who was from Wild Boys. How cool is that? And then I saw your, your photo and this goes into that how you build your personal brand online and the avatar of you with this big smile, the spiked hair, you know, it's like, Hey, this dude seems like, like fun, you know, yeah. my kind of, my kind of person. And again, that that's something that you think about with that personal brand. And then we connected, we got to know each other and then we got to take that experience in person. And that really has deepened. Now, not many people know who we are, you know, we're not at the Marcus Sheridan, Mark Schaefer, Chris Brogan level. Um, but we're, we're able to, to really help each other out to rise up, to make connections with folks like that who are willing to, to, to connect with us. And really, it, to me, it's not about anything other than having a big impact. Um, it's, it's about changing people's lives, whether or not it's, it's on us or and I don't care who gets the credit. It's just about making that difference. And that's where when I become so per, uh, passionate about that personal branding, you know, when you genuinely reach out, you share that avatar images on all your accounts. That's really who you are. Have a little personality, not just your professional goals, but your personality where you talked about connecting with Marcus with church. One of the reasons that I love, uh, like I said, with Chris is, is, is Spartan race. We connected talking about Spartan races to me and other people. It's important to others. It's not. And that's that's something that we often are like, well, no, no, no. Keep it just professional or keep it just personal. And no, it needs to be a combination of the two, because in the end, you know, the reason I connected with you is because you're a person and you're a person who has a lot of overlaps with me in terms of our interest. It's not because, you know, you're a brand or you're it's, it's a human connection. And, yeah. and I think that's really needs to be emphasized when you're thinking of how do I build my personal brand? What type of content do I put out on Facebook or Twitter or whatever the social network is? Don't be afraid to inject a little bit of yourself into it, because that's that's incredibly important to finding those peers and helping rise together, you know, something that we talked about a lot at RGE last year. Yeah, definitely. And, you know, Don, I'm going to go a little sideways here for a second. I am a human, right? I put my <laughs> pants on one leg at a time. Um, but what's really crazy is I'm a human who really can't change my hairdo because it's become its own thing. Like everybody's like, oh, yeah, the spiky hair guy, you know, or as Marcus would say, the prayer hair. So it, it's just it is what it is. And, and here's the thing I love, though. <clears throat> pardon me. I love that you brought up the fact of connections, right? Um, there's this thing in our space that everybody talks about how you need to be a connector. You know, mm -hmm. oh, I want to, you know, get this guy into the, and this person. And I would beg to differ. And I would say that you need to be the connection, meaning you need to be the person that everybody goes, oh, I should get them with this person or I should, you know, be with that person or talk to that person. And and so for me, this is one of the things that I knew, because remember, I talked about, Don, that it was I needed to build some relationships, right? Mm -hmm. I needed to build some clout in the inbound world because, again, I started at inbound zero. Nobody knew jack about me. And so I started doing interviews, right? But I was very specific about the interviews I did. I did things that were HubSpot employees or 
uh, from the HubSpot Academy or if they integrated a platform with HubSpot like SurveyMonkey or Uberflip, I would do an interview with that person. Um, we also started a podcast called the Hubcast, which mm -hmm. is specifically for HubSpot users because one of the things we were trying to do was kind of just get in front of this community and add value to this community, which, of course, then builds your brand, right? Uh, yep. The more value you add, the faster your brand will build, by the way. Somebody should tweet that out. The more value you add, the faster your brand will build. Um, and so here's the other thing, though. that That's all like, yeah, George, that makes sense. The number one thing I will tell you that I think made a huge difference as far as the right relationships with the right HubSpot folks to get on the radar of not being an inbound zero was when I would be on one of their webinars, I wouldn't be a passive audience. Yeah. I wouldn't just sit there and watch the slides and drink my drink and eat my hot dog and go, hey, that was a great <laughs> webinar. I would tweet the crap out of it. I would screenshot things and um, send them out. And people were like, how are you tweeting this stuff out so quick? And I would use the chat pane, not just to ask questions, but like I would ask the guys doing the webinars random questions like M&Ms versus Skittles, right? That comes in your <laughs> chat pane just as you're doing a webinar and you're like, like I would just make myself different than the other 50, 100 or 300 attendees because even if they were asking a, a, a question to the audience, I would answer the question in the chat pane like they were just asking me, right? Yeah. And so all of a sudden they would start to, oh, hey, um, you know, Mauricio, George B. Thomas just typed in that here's a great title for your blog that you're thinking about writing that we were just talking about. So now yeah. I was part of this process. So, yeah. you know, be the connection, Don. And I, and I love it. Karen said in the in the chat, she said, you, you made yourself memorable. And I think that's so important. Uh, Chris made himself memorable, too, by saying that uh, he he puts his pants on one leg at a time. And he also pays somebody to help him put his pants on one leg at a time. <laughs> So, <laughs> we'll have to dig into that more later. And that's why we love Chris Brogan because he's just he's witty as all get out. I love it. I love exactly, it. Exactly, exactly. So, so a couple of things for for all of us to take away from what you said is really thinking about you have to be you have to be somebody who reaches out and is willing to put yourself out there. And I know I did not get to go to. Uh, to inbound this year, but a friend of ours, Krista Catrola, got to go and not only got to go, but got to meet Bren Brown. And she talked about this idea of vulnerability. Is there is there anything you can touch on with that idea of vulnerability and personal branding when it comes to thinking about making yourself, you know, putting yourself out of there, getting out of your comfort zone of, well, what if nobody responds to me in the chat pane? Or what if I walk up to Marcus and he just gives, or, or somebody at an event, they just give me two seconds. Can you talk a little bit about that? Yeah, it's funny, dude. It's like, you're looking at my notes and I didn't send <laughs> My notes. I just want to throw that out there. But the next two things I want to talk about, and they go hand in hand, is that, um, well, let's back up for a second. Remember, Don, I started this blab with it's this whole conversation is predicated on the fact if you want to be someone or do something. OK, if you say yes to that, then you immediately need to believe in yourself. Mm -hmm. You need to understand that you have the chops to get the job done. And you need to realize immediately that you're going to fall down. It's going to hurt and you're going to have to get back up. Now, for me, this was an easy lesson because a little known fact I'm going to drop on this blab is that I grew up in Montana and my wife actually calls me her incognito cowboy because <laughs> I have um, actually am certified in horseback riding and I've trained people how to ride and I've trained horses. And one of the, <laughs> I did not one know of the yeah, well, I see you didn't know that. And so one of the things that you, whenever you get bucked off, you get back on and you ride again, right? And so that's yep. always been a fundamental um, mental process for me. If you get bucked off the horse, you get back on and you ride down the road until you train that horse to, to do it right or until you figure out how to do it right. So when I first started this, trust me, like I had many things that would buck me off my horse. I don't know, my spelling, my grammar, the fact that I didn't know anybody. Um, you know, I didn't have a blog. Um, I don't know. There was a ton of things. And so I just realized, hey, I'm going to plow through this. I'm going to believe in myself. And 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 here's what it comes down to. I haven't really up until recently because you talked about vulnerability, yep. right? When you believe in yourself to some point, 
there's this opportunity for you to put on armor. Like I'm going to believe in myself, but I'm going to protect myself. Mm-hmm. Okay. And so now, um, and that's how I started the journey, right? I, I kind of put some padding on here or there and, um, and, and I just went for it. Now I can tell you that I'm actually at the point in my journey where vulnerability is a key to, to me, right? Mm-hmm. And so I'm going to tell you a little story that will share a little bit about this. And that's that um, I was sitting at a uh, cheesecake factory. That's where we were. And it was Tiffany and it was Marcus and it was myself. And I was getting ready to go do a keynote for the Minbound conference. And um, Marcus looked over at me and said, hey, how are you going to start your keynote? And I said, well, I'm thinking about starting like this. And he's like, no, I think you should drop the bomb. And uh, I'm like, bro, I'm not dropping the bomb. And he's like, you should drop the bomb. And he's like, why is it so hard for you to drop the bomb? And I'm like, I've been running from the bomb for 25 years. (laughs) And he's like, dude, you need to drop the bomb. And so I'll just share it with people on the blab. The bomb for me is that I'm a high school dropout, right? Mm -hmm. And so I was like, I've been running from that for 25 years because I had some dumb teacher tell me that I would never amount to anything. And for a short time of my life, I believed him and I let him affect the way that I was going to live life until I chose, nah, homie ain't playing that. I'm going to go a different way, right? And so I did it. You know, I opened up my keynote and I said, hey, I'm a high school dropout. And I I had to be vulnerable to do that. And I had to let people in and I had to let people chuckle in the audience thinking it was a joke. (laughs) And that was fun. And then go, no, really, I'm a high school dropout. And then, you know, there's just something about if you can embrace your vulnerability, the level that people will immediately be like, oh, my gosh, um, they're real people. And here's what's really cool is that for me, this inbound zero to inbound hero journey isn't about becoming the man, the myth, the legend, George B. Thomas. But it really comes down to the core that, Don, I want to be able to help change people's lives. And because I was able to embrace my vulnerability at this keynote, I had a lady come up to me at the end of the keynote and say, you know, It really sucks when people tell you that you can't be somebody. And she said, for me, George, that was my mother. Mm -hmm. And we had a 20 minute conversation and I realized, man, Marcus Sheridan is the smartest dude on the freaking (laughs) face of the planet. Because if I would have not started my keynote that way, I wouldn't have had those priceless 20 minutes to help change that lady's life. And, and, I, and I think that is something when you think of your your, your branding, I hate using the word strategy because it makes it seem like it's right. not real. But right. you know, that's the type of stuff. Share on your blog, share in a series of tweets, share on Facebook, because the reality is we all struggle. We all have our flaws. Chris was talking about this earlier. You know, he talks about how he's we all have that. And when you're willing to share that, people feel like, wow, this is another human being on the other end of, of, of the uh, cast. So I'll, I'll share something just it, it's not so much a bomb in, in, in a similar way, but it's something that so I was talking to my students yesterday in a class where we talk a lot about personal branding. And I had a student, you know, and they were asking me, you know, why is this so important? Why is this so valuable? Well, I had a student last week who uh, committed suicide and. You know, for me, I, I love my students. I love my clients. I see them as people. And part of it was she there were there were a number of mitigating factors, but it was she didn't believe that once school was finished because she had literally just graduated, that there was anything beyond that, uh, because, you know, people had told her, well, this is the best thing yet. And there were, again, there's other things involved. Sure. But but the reason I get so into this is because I see people struggling when they think that what a high school teacher said, what a parent said, what a, somebody else said that defines who they are. And that's a complete BS. It's yeah. it's what we, we have to learn to be protective of what we say to ourselves in our heads. And sometimes just getting it out there and saying, Hey, this is something that's a flaw in me. It not only exposes that vulnerability, but like I said, on digital, on social, in real life, it connects people with you because we're all flawed. And they're like, Hey, I'm like that too. Wow. Thank you for saying that because now I realize, you know, we're more similar than we are different. And yeah, you know, I love that you went down that road, Don, because for me, 
you're it's not a strategy right so in the marketing space we always talk about strategy and you got to have a strategy and i would say when you when we're talking about personal brand we need to use a different word we need to use the word purpose mm -hmm. right because purpose is deeper than strategy and so for me you know the point that i'm making here is have a purpose for me my purpose is about my family right i know i know how i grew up i know how my wife grew up I knew the punches and, you know, the things that happened during those time frames. And I wanted something better for her for the rest of her life. I wanted something better for my kids for the rest of their life. Mm -hmm. And and I go back to what I kind of jumped the gun on on my other story is that I wanted to be able to change um, people's lives. Right. As a recovering youth pastor, as a recovering associate pastor, there's always this little kind of core piece of me that says, man, if there isn't a bigger purpose, if I'm not doing this to make somebody's life better, then I should just go home and watch the Flintstones. Yeah, yeah. And, and, and that's the cool thing, because one of the things I work with a couple of veterans groups and, you know, one of the things when it comes to, to veterans groups is a lot of vets feel a lack of purpose when they leave the military. They lose the cohesion of team and of purpose. And and um, my dad's a, a, a Korean War vet and, um, you know, Today, veterans, 22 veterans a day kill themselves. Yeah. And it's, just, it's an epidemic. And, and part of it is when we don't feel like our life is purposeful, we don't feel like we're important and we don't matter. Yeah. And, you know, it doesn't have to be doing, going out and it can be changing the world. I always say, you know, you could be a Walmart greeter and make sure that you greet everybody who comes in like they're a long lost friend and give them a smile, give them a reason to smile. That changes people's lives. It could be speaking from a stage, whatever it is. And and when you're doing your personal branding work, circling it back to that too, people pick up on that. You know, who wants to be around somebody who's a downer? Yeah. Somebody, you know, because uh, and I've been on interviewing panels where there, yeah, where there's people who come in who just knock your socks off with their resumes and they you look at their backgrounds, you're like, wow. But then you talk to them and you're like, we can't work with this person. They're just they're going to be a drain on every everybody's energy. They're going to bring negativity to the office. And then you meet somebody who is comes in with all of this energy enthusiasm they're who they are and it's completely different where it's like hey we can teach this person how to do x y and z but they bring value to to where we're at i think that's um a, a really important thing uh to, to think about and to be conscientious of um when it comes to you know being ourselves with this as well as i tell my students you know you want to be really honest and open when you're reaching out for doing your personal branding, because we're doing personal branding for a lot of times business purposes. You know, we want to get a, a new job or we want to get new clients or we want to speak. And, you know, the more genuine you are, what it's going to do is it's going to turn some people off. And that's a good thing because you don't want to work with everybody. You want to work with the right people. And the more you can connect with those right people, the more true fans you're going to have and the more impact you're going to, you're going to have too many people want to please everybody and when you do that you lose who you are and what your purpose is you know really speak to who it is that that you're intending to connect with with again your social media updates your blog updates etc and carry that over into your real life you know be genuine both ways and it's going to make a big impact in helping people like marcus did with you just say man there's something cool about this george dude hey now it's been reinforced in real life and you got that feeling back and you know yeah. then you get synergy and it, it works out phenomenally well, both personally and professionally, because this isn't just a kumbaya feel good thing. It it impacts the bottom line as well. Yeah, you know, it's funny, Don. You hit on something that I don't I don't know if you or I or anybody in the audience realizes how important it is. But one of the most important natural resources that we have that is in so little demand or well, it's in large demand, but in so little supply. That's the way it should be said is the human smile, the yes. human smile. Laura Williams uh, in the chat paint said, you never know if you're the only person that will smile at them that day. And that is so, so true. I mean, yeah. you know, everybody is so worried about themselves and everything that they're going through. And if you just take if you are that person that takes a moment to stop and look up. And smile. And yeah. make somebody's day, man, 
The world would yeah. be a better place, bro. It just it's in, it's it's interesting because one of my mentors, who I've never met in person, I've only read everything that he's written on, on the uh, idea of personal development, is Andy Andrews, and he wrote Andy Andrews. He's a great uh, the the Traveler's Gift is the first book that he wrote. It's a great parable type book. Um, he has a couple of others that are really really good. But he said somebody asked him recently. I it was Michael Hyatt or Dave Ramsey or somebody like that. They said, if you could have people do one thing to really change who they are, you know, have a bigger impact in the world, personally, professionally, et cetera, what would you do? And he said, I would have them smile and I would have them smile when they talk. Yeah. Cause there's something, there's an, I'm a neuroscience geek and there's something in our brains called mirror neurons. And when we see somebody else doing something, it gets reflected back to us. It, yeah. Yeah. And it, it's amazing. And, and, and the cool thing is if you study the, the science, it actually extends just beyond the two people who are on screen and it extends to the people who are not on screen right now. And that has an impact. And Mary Kay, the woman who founded Mary Kay, uh, the cosmetic company, you know, if you think of what she did, she started this woman based home based business at a time where women were not empowered to work. They were expected. Yeah. Yeah, honey, that's a cute little thing you're doing on the side. Go ahead and do it and mm -hmm. empowered these women to become powerful business people. Somebody asked and said, well, what was the key to when you started making uh, becoming really successful? And she said, it was super simple. The one thing I did was I imagined everybody I met had a sign around their neck. And that sign said, please make me feel important. Oh. And you can do that by smiling. You can do that by genuinely looking somebody in the eye and saying, hey, how are you doing? And yeah. that's the same thing. And you, you can reflect that in a digital presence some way too, by just reaching out and say, hey, I saw you did a Spartan race, Chris. Congratulations. Really cool to see that. Or, hey, George, I just saw you wrote this post. That, Or, Laura, you just wrote this post. Or, Karen, you just wrote this post. And, and it really meant a lot to me. Thank you. Yeah. I mean, that that those types of things can really help build that brand. I mean, I don't know. I just want to give a shout out to Karen on one thing she posted where she did a blab yesterday. And for the first half of the blab, nobody was on it, but she kept going. And you know, that's cool. She shares that vulnerability and says she knows that it can be put on YouTube and it can eventually change somebody's lives. So don't get caught up in just looking at that. Think about the bigger picture. And, and that's cool. So, so those little things, again, are like a digital smile in many ways that help people see that, hey, who is this person? I want to start following their accounts. I want to connect with them and I want to see who they are because maybe they'll fit into the fold some, sometime down the road. Absolutely. So we're getting close to the, uh, uh, thank you, Laura. I'm glad that just, just, uh, just wowed you. Um, so we're getting close to the 45 minute level. And I've learned that a maximum of one hour for blabs is really kind of the ideal. So I want to be conscientious of everybody's time. I really appreciate you guys joining us. So do you have any parting words of wisdom? As, okay, if you can take one or two things from today that you want to share with everybody who's given us their time, people who are going to watch this on YouTube, what would those be to get started with building that brand online? Yeah. And, um, and offline. Yeah, building your brand, you can here here it is. You need to collect your mentors, right? Pay attention to who you want to listen to. You need to believe in yourself that you have the chops to get it accomplished, and then you need to be vulnerable to tell your own story because you've been given an amazing story that the world needs to hear. And and you've been given an amazing brain that will process things different than anybody else has ever processed them. You'll be able to explain things in a way that people will just understand. And so, yeah, learn as much as you can from your mentors, believe in yourself, and then just go rock that crap. Yep. And and the other thing to know too, and, and we'll be doing more of these in the future where we'll actually take questions and stuff. But remember, everybody has flaws. Everybody has challenges. The more real you are, the, the more helpful you can be to others and don't be afraid to reach out to people. You know, I'm happy to share some of my struggles because again, that makes us more human and believing in yourself is really one of those. I mean, it sounds cliche and it sounds, you know, whatever Tony Robbins or whatever, which I like Tony Robbins stuff, by the way. But, um, you know, if, if no, if you don't believe in yourself, if you can't get the enemies in your head quiet, you're, you're nothing else matters. 
everybody can tell you how great you are, everybody. In, but if you don't really believe that, and I always tell my students and my clients and my kids and myself, hey, let somebody give you a genuine compliment and say thank you and really process that. Yeah. Because when you learn that you are a value, you start to feel more confident in, in the right way, uh, sharing out who you are and what you can do. And, and you know. I, I might be a little kumbaya here, but the reality is that's what makes the world a better place. And and that's what makes business more fun. That was what makes life more fun. That's what makes you better uh, in, in the friendships you have, the relationships you have, because you feel like I'm making a difference. And that is super, super valuable. You just made me think of something, Don. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. So much. You're right. It does come down to understanding your own value. And so one thing that I didn't get a chance to talk about and we need to at least say is that periodically you need to stop. You need to do a 180 degree turn and you need to look down that mountain that you've climbed to see where you're at compared to where you started. So Absolutely. definitely, definitely, definitely stop and look at the journey that you've taken. You're not the same person anymore. Yeah. You're like, I look back now and I'm like, I'm not that 17 year old kid that Mr. Herbalich said will never yeah. amount to anything. Right. Yeah. I'm George B. Thomas. Dang it. That's exactly right. And that's, you know, the, the, we'll, again, we'll address this on, on future, future episodes, but I think it's so important to get to that point. And, and for myself, I had some challenges with my dad, uh, stuff that he brought home from Korea that really were kind of like that. And, and just getting to the point where you say, you know, that was a gift. You know, thank, I don't think my dad intended to be hard in the way that he was. I think, yep. Um, but I, now I see it as a gift that, you know, thank you. You forced me to believe in myself and now I don't do it out of anger and I don't do it in, out of spite to prove you wrong. I do it because, you know, I, I was hardened, quote unquote, in some ways, but it, it's a good thing. It's a good thing to say, hey, you know, I now believe in myself and, you know, that that sense of being able to look back that it was a gift to have some of those challenges. And, and again, we all have challenges and what 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 comes out of them is going to be what we decide comes out of them. So absolutely. Well, George, thank you so much for joining and everybody. Thank you so much for joining in. I'm really appreciative. George and I are going to be doing some of these. I know I'll be doing more of these as well. And I'm going to try to pull George in because George is the man, the myth, the legend when it comes to this stuff. Uh, really love and appreciate the time. We'll make sure to share out this recording and hopefully we're able to connect with all of you guys in the near future, both online and hopefully in person.